Axel Henderson's got a little bit of history with the Auburn folks, isn't it? It was the uh, the meme that will live in infamy, right, for 2013. Musa Cisse and Denai Broom jump at center circle, and the opening tip goes to Ole Miss. Jalen Murray walks it into the front court. And the breakfield guarded by Jalen Williams on the wing. He hands it off. Auburn aggressive defensively early. Denver Jones guarding Murray. Matthew Morrell stepped back from the corner, got it to go. Starting five for the Auburn Tigers, Jalen Williamson, along with Trey Donaldson, getting his third start in a row at the point guard spot. Broom, Moore, and Jones round out the first five for the Auburn Tigers. This is a deep Auburn team. Ten guys that play 15 minutes or more. Well, not only that, each guy that comes in from each position gives you a little bit something different. All are effective, but in a different way. Shot clock at five. Donaldson trying to get it away. At the buzzer, short by Jones. A good opening defensive possession for the Rebels. Uh, with the excitement in here, Auburn coming in off the road. You've got to weather the emotion in the beginning of this game. Flanagan with a three. And Ole Miss jumps out to a 6 nothing lead. Allen Flanagan in the first meeting had 10 points in somewhat of a homecoming game. Played four years at Auburn before transferring to Ole Miss. Well, we know Coach Chris Baird for his defensive mind. He's got a heck of an offensive team. They make just over seven per game from the three-point line. Back-to-back -back to open it up. Tonight, Brown dumps it off, but it's blocked from behind by Brakefield. Ole Miss off to a fast start. Morrell, no. Tipped around Cisse with the offensive board. Here's Murray. Auburn is number two in the SEC in defending the three-point line. You only every other team shooting 29% against them. Donaldson into the corner. That's Chris Moore. Now up top to Brew. Here's Donaldson from the opposite corner. Got a three, and Auburn is on the board. That was just a great extra swing pass. One of what Auburn does. Not only do they play 10 guys, as you mentioned, 15 plus minutes, but they lead the SEC in assists. So. They're unselfish, understand how to play with each other as well. 18 assists per game for this Auburn basketball team. Morrell contested, got it to go. Richard, let me tell you something. There were nights last season, right? This kid was the best offensive player in the league. We realized that Dalton Connect, he's a pretty good offensive guy. But I put Matthew Morrell up to anybody when he's rolling, shoots the three, so big and strong, can rise up over his defender and hit that little fadeaway shot. Deny Broom working inside, gets a little bit of space, left it short, and Cisse secures the defensive rebound. Matthew Morrell, who you were talking about, playing in his 111th career game. This is Cisse, and one. What a start for Ole Miss. Well, Ole Miss has been quick getting the ball off the rim, make or miss. Great penetration by Brakefield. He understands. He all he has to do is see how Jani Broom comes over. Jani Broom's a heck of a shot blocker. He understands. Jalen Brakefield, left hand is going to try to go rise up there. Maybe a little over help from, from Broom. But credit Brakefield to recognize that. And Cisse does a good job. Just run to the gym, uh, to, to the rim. Big Cisse, he'll find you. This is Cisse, too strong with the free throw, and the rebound to Chaney Johnson. Johnson and Chad Baker Mazzara have checked in for Auburn. I guess you could run to the gym, too. But then, well, that defeat the purpose, right? You just walk and then, and then work on it. Out front, Baker Mazzara. Gets it into the high post this time for Bruce. Well, he's so, he, he's got great pass. You can play the offense through him on the block or up in the free throw line area, even from the top of the key. It's your night room. Brakefield with the rebound. Did you Murray the lob? Cisse with the flush. <laughs> Ole Miss has made two of four from behind the arc. They've made all three of their shots in the paint. Well, and that right there is all Jalen Murray coming up that screen. Woo. Donaldson, he's got all six for Auburn, both from deep. Well, it, you know, he's, he's a sophomore, okay? He, he starts this game. And he's a former high school quarterback. He's played really well. He's usually coming in for Aiden Holloway. 
Auburn, a team that's got a ton of experience on their roster. Planning a true from about 15 feet on the left side. Point guard, though, the one spot where there's not a ton of experience. You've got the freshman Aiden Holloway, who until two games ago was starting. And Donaldson, who's just got one year of experience. Uh, they both need this game, especially Holloway. And, and he's, after games like this, he's going to become a much more seasoned point guard in the SEC. Donaldson looking for a third triple. This time a little too strong, but an offensive board for Broom. Broom to the corner. Baker Mazzara for three. Got it. Well, if there's one concern for Ole Miss right off the bat, you know that they are not the best offense, uh, defensive rebounding team in the SEC. And that three comes off of the offensive rebound, kick it back out to the three-point line. Inside, Murray from six feet. Drew a little contact, absorbed it. A little teardrop to go. And that's just that motion that Coach Chris Baird wants to run. Just, guys, keep moving, play moving, ball moving. Make the extra pass, we'll find something. Donaldson gets it to the corner. This is Johnson on the drive, guarded by Brakefield. Janai Broom, who made two threes against Vanderbilt, off the mark there. Johnson rebounded, put back. And that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Not easy to go to somebody else's gym in this kind of atmosphere and not expect to knock down three-point shots. How can you win? Get on the offensive glass, stick back, get to the free throw line. Murray. And Janai Broom grabs the loose ball. Almost six minutes in without a stoppage. Well, that's when you get two high-level teams understand how to defend without fouling. Cisse with the block, and that takes us to our first timeout. All this has made seven of its first ten. This one, pretty high percentage. Well, Jalen Murray's so detailed. But he knows what to give these guys. He doesn't get like, you know, oversaturate with them. He knows exactly what they need. It gives it to him quick, over and over. That's why he's able to get go get it going wherever he's at immediately. He's taking Little Rock, Texas Tech, and Texas to the NCAA tournament. And took Texas Tech to the national championship game. Turnover on the inbound there. Except a step on the line. First turnover of the game for either team. It's been... A very clean game, like, you know, tough, hard defense. Not a lot of cheap fouls. It's kept Auburn in it. Just those two offensive rebounds resulted in five points. Well, three-point shooting. Auburn, three of its first six from behind the arc. Ole Miss, two of its first four. T.J. Caldwell is coming to the game for Ole Miss. He's got the ball and gives it away. Caldwell coming off a career-high 18 against Mississippi State. Also, Brandon Murray from the elbow gets it to go. A little leaner there from 15 feet. Well, he's still getting back into the rhythm. Uh, obviously not starting in, in, as a, you know, got eligible uh, here just recently. So what he brings is an all-around game. He can put it on the floor, he shoot the three, he rebounds. Very strong play. Baker Mazzara from the corner has that one rim out. Touched last, though, by Ole Miss. Tigers will keep it on the offensive end. We're talking about Brandon Murray. As a freshman at LSU, he started 32 games, averaged 10 points a game, transferred to Georgetown, really good. So he's at his third school and then ultimately was ruled immediately eligible. But it didn't happen immediately. He had to wait a while for it to happen. Well, and that happened to a lot. It happened to Jalen Murray. Uh, even Cissé had to sit out early in the season was deemed eligible. Shot clock at five. Aiden Holloway has come in for Auburn. Three from the corner. No. And it's Brandon Murray with the rebound. Murray kicks it off. Brandon Murray ball fake. Extra pass. Juju Murray for three. Too strong. And a whistle underneath. That's a foul that's going to go against Auburn. Fouls on Aiden Holloway. Bruce Pearl. What a job he has done with the, him more scoring opportunities. And like I said, I mean, he's got all the strengths out there. He can score any way you want him to. He's just got to understand how to create more scoring opportunities for himself. And Alan Flanagan, oh, by the way, he's the second winningest player in Auburn basketball history. Jalen Williams on this team for Auburn, the winningest in school history. They were in there together. Would have been a fifth-year player in Auburn, transferred to Ole Miss. Little Rock native, Alan Flanagan, comes from a 
Long line of great SEC players. His father, West Virginia, again, coached now. There he is for Ole Miss. Was with Auburn last year. Of course, a Hall of Fame career at Auburn. There's a block inside by Baker Mazzara. Cardwell was there also. Auburn trying to get out in transition. Hadn't been able to do that a lot so far. Holloway fouled on the drive. Aiden Holloway, true freshman, and it's been a really good year. He's got 17 starts this season. He's done a really good job protecting the basketball. He's arguably the best freshman in the country at doing that. And you, you see right there, he, you know, there's been a little bit of struggles shooting the ball yeah. in, in conference play, right? And I think you just got to get adjusted to the speed and the physicality and all that. But you see him right there. He turned down that three, okay? That's a shot. We've got eight and We've got a custom for him shooting at six, seven feet behind three-point line. Talk what to does he do? Turns it down, attacks a basket, gets to the free throw line. You know, maybe that gets him going. Talked to Aiden uh, Holloway after Auburn's shoot around earlier today, and I asked him, I said, how's your confidence? You know, you, you a great start to the year. You had 19 against Baylor in the season opener. And he said, honestly, not as good as it should be right now. Morell on the drive, down the basket. Cardwell was trying to get the block. They'll go back and look at that in the next dead ball to make sure that the ball was coming off the glass. In another instance, right, Auburn's defense is the real deal. They're so good. I think Coach Beard said, listen, we're going to try to get out in front of this defense before it can set up. If we get a good quick one, we're going to try to get that. Jalen Williams with the hook. Left hand. Yeah, a little zone defense there by Ole Miss. And if Jalen Williams catches it right there, my man is so good. Ten feet and in with that little left-handed hook. You've got to get on him and not allow him to catch it like that. He had 13 against Ole Miss in the first meeting of these two teams. That was two weeks ago. Morell's got seven. Couldn't finish with the layup there at the rim. I didn't know he was going to lay it in with the left, the right, or try to dunk it. Williams thought about the three. Here's Baker Mazzara from the corner, contested off the mark. Cardwell tips it out. Katie Johnson got the three. That's the second three off of the offensive rebound. Great tip back by Jim Cardwell. Don't you wish you could know what KD Johnson was thinking? He he, he hides his emotion so much. <laughs> Plays with a huge smile on his face. High point game. Going to make that ball move to the other side of the floor. It's been on the same side for a couple passes here for Ole Miss. Shot clock under five. Contested three is good for Brandon Murray. You see what you get from him? <laughs> I mean, he is just obviously a super athlete. He's got three-point range, defends really well, great pickup. 25 points in less than 10 minutes for Ole Miss. It took until the under-six timeout in the first meeting for Ole Miss to score 20. Holloway off the screen, three ball, no, but another offensive rebound. Holloway again, this time, got it! Big shot there for the freshman. I mean, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but that's the third three off of an offensive rebound and Aiden Holloway has got to shoot that because he knows he's got his offensive rebound guys there for him. Murray was looking for a whistle, didn't get it. Auburn down five with the ball, ten minutes to play in the first half. Tigers 5 of 12 from behind the arc in the early going of this ballgame. Shot clock down to four. Baker Mazzara short. Murray had it. Morell ends up with it. Ole Miss trying to run. Break field. He's fouled. Knocked to the floor. Chris Beard looking for an intentional foul on that one. Ole Miss leads at times. To get out there in front of the defense before this very versatile Auburn defense sets up because they're as tough in the country to score against when they get set. Leor Berman has come into the game for the first time today for Auburn. Breakfield makes the first, so Auburn with 
Jalen Williams and Trey Donaldson, Janai Broom, Denver Jones, Leor Berman on the floor. And free throws good for Jamin Brakefield. His first two points of the game. Oh, this has brought Austin Nunez into the game, the transfer from Arizona State. Dump it into the post, and Jalen Williams. He's had a couple of nice buckets down low. Well, that's that action they had ran it previously of Jalen Williams. He's so big, and he catches it, come across that lane. And once he catches it there at that SEC logo, it's over. Game over. He's got that nice little left-handed hook. Just too big to prevent that. Murray guarded by Donaldson, gives it to Cisse, who works inside against Broome. Got a little clear out. Cisse... Not a block, but that shot was definitely altered that time by Broom. Well, Broom just great patience. Didn't reach in, just went straight up. So if you're going to score, big fella, you're going to have to go over me with the left hand. On the offensive end, Janai Broom, no points yet. Jalen Williams for three, short. And the rebound for Brandon Murray. Brandon Murray's playing time is continuing to go up. Here's Morrell. Williams with the rebound. After a hot start, Ole Miss. Struggling to find a bucket. Taylor Jones trying to split defenders. He had it stripped. Murray gets it off to Morrell. Morrell gets by Jalen Williams for the transition two. You've got to be tight with the basketball, especially if you're going to try to split the defense. Ole Miss, great hands, average about nine steals a game. If you expose it, they're going to get it, and they're going to run for an easy two. Yeah, Morrell with the run through steal. Morrell with the flush on the other end. As if this crowd needed anything else to be excited about. <laughs> All morning, a shoot-around coach Beard had said, listen, we can't let Jalen Williams catch it easy like that. Stay in front of him. Morrell did it. Got the steal and dunk. Berman knocked to the floor. That's a foul on Ole Miss. Trying to come up with a defensive rebound. 7-0-4 left in this first half. Get so it's going to be a competitive game. It's going to be a quad one, quad two game. And... That is, you know, committee looks at those and, and those way heavily, and, and the SEC is competitive. So there's no bad losses when you look at any of these games. Lob into Brew, but then a rejection by Cisse, and a second one. Two blocks by Musa Cisse on the same possession. And then Cheney Johnson whistled for a foul in transition going the other way. You likely have seen Kyle Wakefield <laughs> this week, including as a guest on Marty and McGee this morning. He said, we saw him early this morning. He's had his game face on. Okay, actually, I don't think he ever takes it off all season long. Got mom and dad in the house today. They live in Katy, Texas. Glenn and Brandy Wakefield talked to Kyle's dad, Glenn, before the game. He's so proud of his son and so thankful. For all of the positive attention that he's gotten this week. How about Breakfield with a triple? I mean, I think you should give Kyle Wakefield that assist. I mean, there's no coincidence that Breakfield made that three-point shot right where Kyle Wakefield just mopped it up. 12-point lead for Ole Miss, biggest of the game. 6-20 to play in the first half. Cheney Johnson on the drive, and he has whistled for an offensive foul. Don't see a lot of those offensive fouls there, but that was an excellent job. Moving your feet, moving just enough. Jamin, all right. Do you agree with that call? Yeah, it looked like the left elbow, and, 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 and as a challenge, Johnson tried to create that space. And it's a combination 
Listen, you can create space. A lot of players will lean in with their shoulder, but once you elevate that elbow, it, and, and it just gives the impression that you're pushing off with that elbow. Seven-zero run for Ole Miss as Jalen Murray brings it into the front court. Flanagan finds some space from the elbow, too strong, and Cheney Johnson comes down with a rebound, and then Flanagan called for the foul. Let me tell you, we saw Al Flanagan rises up, realizes he was going to miss it. Did a great job of following up his shot, but that was a big time defensive rebound by Cheney Johnson. I mean, he went high into the Raptors to grab that. Physical game so far, but not a ton of whistles. Auburn has been called for five team fouls, Ole Miss for three. And, and really, I think Ole Miss is just, has been able to take advantage of the turnovers. It's just four turnovers for Auburn, right? That's not a lot. These two of the uh, best assist to turnover ratio teams we have in the league. But Ole Miss has capitalized on all of those four turnovers. Boom, looking for help. Finally gets it away to Donaldson who finds a lane and gets all the way to the rim with the left hand. It looked terrible and then it looked great <laughs> just, for Albert. The C just parted for him. He took advantage of it. TJ Caldwell, D3, missed everything. And Flanagan, he was trying to throw it off the leg of Williams, which he did. But then the ball hit him standing out of bounds. <laughs> you don't see that too often. I catch that, but the referees right there is a good call. And I think Caldwell, that's a set Auburn defense. Yes, it's one pass, but if you can get a little bit better one there, you should. I think Steven Anderson said that Flanagan was actually standing on the okay. end line when he tried to throw it back in. Makes sense. David Williams, a little loose with the basketball. He's able to save it. Throws it off of Flanagan. And then the ball bounces back and hits him standing out of bounds. Alan Flanagan, he did an excellent job in his Kyle Wakefield again. I'm, on, I'm, I'm going to predict it's going to be another Ole Miss bucket right here. Just something about the energy Kyle brings. Kyle Wakefield in his fourth year as a student manager at Ole Miss. Kermit Davis brought him in. Actually, some ties to Chris Beard, his brother Cole, who is now a, an assistant on uh, Bob Marlin's staff in Louisiana. That's works, nice. Works for Chris Beard at Texas Tech. Okay, that's great. Nice and warm here, so he's going to have plenty of work today. <laughs> Flanagan lost it. Tipped away by Williams. Early on, Ole Miss was getting a little bit more of open shots. I think they've got to go back to player movement, ball movement, this motion offense. You've got to make sure the basketball goes from side to side because, as we talked about, Talking about one of the top defenses in the country. Shot clock winding down. Long three, maybe partially blocked. Murray came up way short. Auburn trying to go fast in transition. Denver Jones into the lane. Denver Jones lays it up. Denver Jones coming off a season I 19 against Vanderbilt. He was first team all conference USA at FIU a year ago. Breakfield. Has it blocked, and it's touched last by Brakefield, and Janai Broom says, no, sir, not this time. No, sir, at all, and Auburn, from a two-point field goal defensive team, holding their opponent to 42%. That's good for third in the country. Brakefield with a block. That is Ole Miss's fifth block in the first half. <laughs> they lead the league. They get about six per game. Trey Donaldson being aggressive again. Good thing. foul certainly counts as a personal foul. And so Broom will now come to the bench for Auburn. And Dylan Cardwell will come back into the game for the Tigers. Dylan Cardwell, who we learned earlier today, is becoming enthralled with the game of golf. <laughs> he hits a 7-iron 195 yards. Woo. Three on the way. Short. That's an offensive rebound. And that is a foul on Ole Miss. So Denver Jones... It's the offensive board, and Musa Cisse picks up the foul. And the activity on the offensive glass for Auburn has been key for them tonight. They average about 
12 per game. And we talk about Ole Miss struggles at the bottom of the league. Baker Mazzara on the drive. Cardwell trying to strip down the rebound. Not able to secure it. So it's Ole Miss basketball going the other way. Auburn has 10 offensive rebounds in the first half. And it, it has on, on our stat here for 11 points. So 10 offensive rebounds, 11 points. Three of them have been offensive rebound kicked back for a three-point shot. That's right. And that's a backbreaker, though, Richard. You know, I mean, all... Because you think you do your job as a defense, and then the final thing is to kill the defensive rebound, you don't do it. Breakfield on the drive. Cardwell got the block. Cissé grabs the loose ball and slams it home. That was a big-time block that by Cardwell. It. Cardwell, verticality, goes straight up. No foul call, but Cissé not giving up on the play. Donaldson feeds it to Cardwell down the left side. Couldn't finish with the left hand. Ball loose on the floor, and Ole Miss comes away with it. Flanagan got it to Murray. Murray pushing the break. Into the corner, Morrell for three. Got it! Second three of the game for Matthew Morrell. He's got 14 points. Such a good job by Jalen Murray to get in the paint and find his shooter. And an unforced error there by Auburn. Sloppy passing on the perimeter. That's a turnover for the Tigers. Cardinal going straight up, but how about Cissé? Just hang around the rim. And then Jalen Murray, good job, just drawing that defense in. You see Matthew Morrell, a little hesitation, but understands, listen, if you're going to give me just enough space, and he's explosive at that three-point line, not many guys who are going to play defense on him that he can't rise up and shoot over. Ole Miss up 13 with 3.05 to play in this first half. It's the biggest lead of the half for the Rebels. Morrell guarded by Aiden Holloway there. Trying to feed it inside to Cissé, and Ole Miss turns it over. Just their second of the first half. Denver Jones straight to the rim. Count the basket and a foul. Great job by Denver Jones. He saw, he's looking to see. See how that defense is going to open up for me? CC was kind of caught in no man's land right there. Understanding Jalen Williams. I've got to stay close to Jalen Williams. Can't let him catch it in the sweet spot. Turns around. Got caught right underneath the basket. That's two fouls now on Musa CC. He goes to the bench, and Ole Miss is without Jamarian Sharp today. We were told health-related. It was going to be a game-time decision. Got to the gym. He was in sweats, and there's your decision. <laughs> exactly. Jones finishes off the three-point play to get Auburn back within 10. Most important thing for Auburn in those last two and a half minutes. Well, I think try, they try and get single digits. Well, there's no doubt about it. Take care of the basketball. That's something they've done all season, struggling today. Brandon Murray with eight points. That's one off his season high. It's come all in the first half. That's his second three. But think about this. Auburn holds opponents to 21% from the three-point line. Ole Miss got back-to-back -back in the last two possessions. Out to Williams. Good open shot. And Jalen Williams hits a big three for Auburn. Yeah, we've seen him all throughout this season. The improvement. He gets it in the block. In the paint, could score there and extended his range to the three point line. Both Auburn and Ole Miss with six made threes in the first half. Auburn six of 17, Ole Miss six of 11. And these teams, they average about seven made threes per game. So both good defensive teams, though, rim protection, that may be the only thing they'll be able to get. Flanagan missed that one badly. Baker Mazzara grabs it. Holloway steps into a three in transition, overshot it. Another offensive rebound, Jalen Williams, but a steal. Murray ran through the passing lane and gets it to roll in. There's quick hands, there's active hands, and then there's just slow, lazy bounce passes. And that one was unforced. Bruce Pearl was trying to get a timeout. Officials didn't see it. They'll play out the possession with 10 on the shot clock, and that's a turnover, or was it tipped? Auburn is saying that ball was tipped. 
Officials disagreeing. That's another turnover for the Tigers. They're eight. Uh, Brandon, Bar Brandon Murray did not allow Jalen Williams to catch it in his sweet spot. Just pushed him out towards the three-point line. And then good job by Jalen Murray. Not allow Aylen Holloway to turn that corner. Murray against Holloway. Size mismatch here. Murray working against Cardwell. Protect the ball. Good defense by Dylan Cardwell. Auburn down 12 with the ball. And an eight-second difference. Shot clock and game clock. Jones from the corner with a three. That gets it to single digits. Ole Miss trying to chase down the basketball. Had trouble getting it in. Clock down to two. Murray for three at the buzzer. It's off the mark. Auburn with a big three from the corner to get it back into single digits from Denver Jones. Ole Miss 15-0 when leading at the half. Undefeated. And Holt's teammate says, where is my man, Matt Morrell? Well, there he is in the corner for three. 14 first half points for Matthew Morrell to lead Ole Miss. Denver Jones leading the way for Auburn with eight in the first half. Made three of his six field goals. Auburn turns it over eight times in the first half. You see, that's just two and a half shy of their season average. What's Auburn got to do, not only to get back in this game, but find a way to get a win on the road? Well, I think there's two things. And taking care of the basketball. You can't win on the road, right? Auburn averages their turnover rate is about 15%. 15% of their possessions. Today, 20 to block with foul here. So, blocks. <laughs> we got them both. Two good ones. Well, because you've got, you got Janai Broom, Jalen Williams, of course, Dylan Cardwell for Auburn. They're always going to protect the rim. Excellent, excellent defensive team in Auburn. Jalen Williams misses the first free throw. Seven points for Williams. One made three. Also had three rebounds in the first half. Makes the second, and that makes it an eight-point game. So you talk about turnovers protecting the basketball. How much of it for Auburn? Talking about anatomy of a comeback. Has to happen start on the defensive end. Well, it does, it, and especially defending that three-point line. I think that's going to be key. And, and Auburn is excellent. Second in the SEC at defending that three-point line, only allowed 29%. And think about this. They're the second in the SEC in overall defensive field goal percentage at 35%. Morrell short on the three with that miss. Ole Miss now 6 of 13 from behind the arc. Inside tonight, Broom. Oh, my. Just grabbed the rim. And count the basket. I wonder what that would be like. You get up that high and just be like, ah, just grab the rim. <laughs> just, just hold on to it. But yeah, it, it, yeah, right there. It looked like it was almost just instinct so he doesn't topple over Janai Broom because he was leaning to him. If he didn't catch that rim, he might have landed on top of him and, and had how to fall to the floor. Offensive rebound for Williams. Now, Jalen, uh, tonight, Broom with the offensive rebound and the putback. And a good start to this second half for Auburn. They scored the first five and cut it to four. Yeah, but it's all been in the paint. So they've challenged Ole Miss at the three point line, and then they've gotten it to the paint and to the free throw line. And a whistle and a foul underneath on Ole Miss headed the other way. That's Jamin Brakefield. Oh, I beg your pardon, that's on Janai Broom. And that is Janai Broom's third foul. The interesting Coach Pearl is going to let him play it out. I love it. Not happy with the foul, but it's going to let him play it out. Well, 
being guarded by Moore. Shot clock at five. Murray. Auburn comes away with it. And you don't see a big man defend it. The opposing team's lead guard out on the perimeter on the dribble as well as Janai Broom just did. Flanagan steps in and knocks that one away. And then Ole Miss nearly gives it back. Morrell able to dig it out. And then Ole Miss turns it over. Coach Pearl wants him to run here. Jones, transition three, overshoots it. Rebels come away with it. As clean a start as we had to the game. A little sloppy to start the second half. Flanagan says, no, no, I got it. Finger roll for Alan Flanagan. Williams turned down that open straight on three. Gives it up to the corner. And Chris Moore with a triple. Great extra pass. Chris Moore had his feet set. He was waiting for that extra swing to the corner. Great job by Jalen Williams. Who had a good look at it? That's just the third made three of the season for Chris Moore. Well, it was a great pass on time on target. His feet were set, shoulders square. Great field at the mid-range to put Ole Miss back in front by five. Seven points now for Jalen Brakefield. Auburn's been active on the offensive glass. A lot of times, Cissé's out there blocking shots, so he's out of position. So somebody else in the power to blue is going to come over to help defensive rebound. Donaldson <laughs> gives it to Williams. It's a patient move inside by Jalen Williams to get a little space. And then he just explodes up with a dunk. Murray guarded tightly by Moore, trying to work off the screen from Cissé. Flanagan stops, pops from 10 feet. Room with the rebound. Six rebounds for Janai Broom. He's only got two points today, though. Trey Donaldson had it roll off. And then headed the other way. Touch last by Auburn. Everything for Auburn this half has been to the rim, whether it's missed shot, offensive rebound, they've got to the free throw line because of that aggressiveness. It's paid off for them. Four new players into the game for Auburn. Donaldson stays on the floor. Cheney Johnson, Baker Mazzara, KD Johnson, and Cardwell all check in. Closest this game has been since 6-3. Field foul on the way again. You got to respect Jalen Murray coming off that high ball screen. He can shoot that, he can go around you. But that's a nice, decisive move by Jamin Brakefield. There was no hesitation. He saw the driving lane, caught it, exploded right to the rim. Brakefield just shy of 14 points per game in SEC play. And look at that from the free throw line 90% in conference play. We are told that Alan Flanagan has left the floor and is being checked out, maybe in the locker room. Yeah, the training staff. And on that full out, uh, full court sprint layup, he ran back hobbling a little bit, but he did run back. But you could just tell that he's being a little ginger on whatever it was that was bothering him. So they go back there and checking it out. Brakefield's made all four of his free throws today. Aiden Holloway has now come in for Auburn as well. So the five that started the second half are now all on the bench for Auburn. Not uncommon. <laughs> no, it's not. Not in the depth that Auburn has. Cardwell kicks it out. KD Johnson. Cross-court pass from the corner. Chad Baker. Mazzaro with the triple. Auburn has cut it to two. The beauty of that is Baker Mazar knew exactly where to go. If you want to get open shots, you've got to understand how to move to get to the open spaces and create an opening. Great field, a little too strong. Had a great move to get to the cup and couldn't finish. Holloway for the tie. It's 50 apiece. And another layup. 
for Auburn just living in the paint. First time we've been tied since 0-0. A good block by Baker Mazzara. Foul. KD Johnson draws the whistle, and he will have free throws to give Auburn its first lead of the game when we come back off the transition. I think has been above, above 100 for, for a while. Look at that. You see the peak. It's, it's gone to almost 130 in the building. Thank God we have headphones on. KD Johnson. To try and give Auburn its first lead of the game, and he does just that. Tigers up 51-50. So, so you look at any kind of road recipe, right? It starts with valuing your possessions, turnovers. Auburn's clean that up in the second half. The second thing is high percentage shots. They've got layups, free throws, and open three-point shots. Richard, the key is open. As a matter of fact, six of nine overall for this half. Two for three from the three-point line. All good looks. Twelve points in the paint for Auburn. That's how they got back into it. Flanagan back into the game. They checked him out. Ankles good to go. T.J. Caldwell has not scored today. Coming off an 18-point game for the Rebels in the win against Mississippi State. Flanagan shot clock winding down. Knocks out the three. Good defense by Auburn, but the value of Al Flanagan, the size he has, being able to rise up, shoot it over his defender. Chaney Johnson working against Flanagan off the glass. Good move by Chaney Johnson. It started where he caught it. He caught it right there on the block, but in the paint, basically underneath the basket. Good move and finish. You want a completely useless stat? Yes, I love him. Ole Miss is three of three from behind the arc with less than five seconds on the shot clock. And now they got a chance for another three-point play with the conventional stuff. Well, that's important because if you're not scoring early against the Sauber defense, that's a great right-handed natural lefty by Alan Flanagan to take the contact. But to your point, we saw in the first half Ole Miss wanted to push it, try to get a good look before this great Auburn defense set up. Now, if you can, at the end of the shot clock, have some success, very rare against Auburn in their defense that you can find that. O Ole Miss has found it today. In the first meeting against Auburn, Ole Miss was 4 of 17 from 3, so less than 25%. Today, the Rebels have hit 7 of 15. Auburn has made nine three-point baskets. KD Johnson guarded by Morrell. Good dribbling, finds some space and hits the 17 footer. He lets everybody know about it. But that was a great attack step back. Johnson, there's a lob. Cisse with the finish. Off the assist from Brandon Murray. CC does a good job of understanding his strength. Stay around the basket on this defensive end and the offensive end. They'll find you. Lucia Cisse has got eight. That's one off his season high. Aiden Holloway guarded by Murray. Steps back. Three on the way. Too strong. And it's Murray that runs down the rebound. Feeds it inside. Morrell turns around. Left it short from six feet. Baker Mazzara pulls down the board. Working against Brandon Murray, spins left hand. How about the touch for Chad Baker Mazzara? The touch and the presence of mind, the awareness, knowing Cisse is going to be there. I got to get it high up over that rim. Was able to do it just over the fingertips of Cisse. Landing it, guarded by Cardwell. He gets some space with the crossover. Missed the jumper. Auburn in transition, Flanagan knocked it away, it's touched last by Cardwell. That's a turnover by Auburn, their 10th of the game. Yeah, he's a big fella, Dylan Cardwell, who can move like the wind. As big as Dylan Cardwell is, just didn't get it high enough over the fingertips of that Ole Miss defender. Coach Pearl wants him to run, wants him to play with their head up. That one right there thought maybe he... 
could have held back on that advance pass. Aiden Holloway does not make a bunch of mistakes. That's no. only his 22nd turnover. Boy, point guard is a true freshman in the SEC. And that is, you know, the reason why he's he's getting so many early minutes. Uh, Coach Pearl, who's always had great decision makers at point guard. Aiden Holloway's he's a great decision maker at the point guard position and could score. You know how well he facilitates, but he can put the ball in the hole as well. Cissé and Cardwell. And Cissé gets the roll. And a little shuffle. And Owen Short says no more. <laughs> You're not going to get a lot of strict hope stuff like that for Cissé. They gave him space. They gave him time. Dylan Cardwell. We just saw him. He's great defensively going straight up and um, vertically defending those shots. Ten points for Musa Cisse ties his season high. And that was one of the guys we talked to Coach Beard about, Musa Cisse. And ask about offensively, what's he expect from him? And it talked about how he wasn't able to practice uh, up until he was declared eligible right before that Memphis game, December 2nd. So now he's not practicing. He just comes in, starts playing. So offensively, he's still working on getting his rhythm. Uh, but he says right now, you know, he offense rebounds, stick back, catch alley oops, gives him that post up option. That's fantastic. That foul on Allen Flanagan was his third. And Musa Cisse dealing with the injury and the ineligibility at the same time. And they both kind of got better early in December. Jalen Williams with the hammer. That's probably a guy you're going to want to identify on the half-court offense. Where is he? We, we, we watched shoot around this morning. Coach Bear was like, listen, fellas, you got to stay in between him and the hoop. He moves so well without the ball, and they are looking for him. And he can finish. The leads, best of leads Auburn with 14 points. There's a turnover by Ole Miss. Breakfield trying to feed it to Murray. That takes us to an official's timeout. 60 to 60. Mm, great cut. In a home atmosphere. It should be as difficult as it is. Both these schools have very difficult home atmospheres. It should be like that everywhere. 60-60. And a long way to go. KD Johnson lost the handle. Plenty of time. Johnson on the drive. Bumped by Flanagan. What a shot. KD Johnson, big second half. He's down at nine points in the game. Great patience right there, too. That floater is not an easy shot. But again, Getting to the paint. Although difficult shot, Auburn able to get in that painted area. Morell. Williams with the rebound. Jalen Williams rebounding coast to coast. Uh, what was that you were saying about get between him and the basket? Now, Coach Bear's not going to be happy because there was just no resistance on the ball. you got to pick up the basketball, then get out to your shooters. Of course, protect your own basket, but got to stop that basketball given the fact that Auburn is ninth in the NCAA's net rankings it's a little hard to believe that the Tigers do not have a quad one win this season they are 0-4 in quad one opportunities this is a quad one opportunity we're talking top 30 home wins top 50 neutral site wins top 75 road wins now, Bruce Pearl was not terribly interested in no. talking about quad. I've heard enough about yeah. that. He, he wants so, to get one of them just so people stop talking about it, I think. He said, look at the schedule that we've played this season. There's a reason that we're ranked number eight in the net. Yeah, and, and, and I think, yeah, we want to talk about quad one, and, and that's good. But it's the overall, and they've done certainly enough 
early on. And a turnover there. Flanagan threw it right to Cardwell. Auburn has turned it up on the defensive end in this second half. They've outscored Ole Miss 29 to 16. In route to a four-point lead after trailing by nine at the half. Auburn has trailed by as much as 13 in the game. This is their biggest lead. Cardwell, shot clock at five. Takes it out. Ball loose, and Ole Miss able to dig it out. Cisse ahead to Morrell. Flanagan. Long rebound tipped out to Ole Miss. Break field, ball fake. And he is fouled on the drive. Breakfield did a good job there. First of all, bodies were flying in there. And I don't know if it was C.C. or Breakfield got his fingertip on there getting the opportunity. But he catches it right there. He's got such a soft touch. Good hands, Breakfield. Good jump shot. We know that. Just bait the defense with a nice ball fake. And they had him right there in the post up against Denver Jones. Morell from the corner. Let's and turn it down to two. Let's get a three. Why not? Richie crosses his math. Old school mathematics. His third three of the game, 17 points, and that gets Ole Miss within one. All the way off the screen. Hobbs it in and a foul. Morrell, too much contact on the entry pass. Oh, credit Dylan Carwell right there. He's holding off. A couple of Ole Miss players went up. Strong rebound. Of course, we know how strong he is. He's improved so much, too. He, how he moves on the basketball, basketball court compared to years past. It's while still maintaining that strength that he has. And did I tell you, he hits a 7-iron, 195 yards. You did. You saw me there. He's already graduated, so a couple of his classes now is golf, bowling. Said one of the staff members from Auburn today said, we've encouraged him. Now's the time. Get your master. We're paying for it. <laughs> but he's taking golf. And listen, he fixed his, uh, he used to have a shank to him. He said he fixed that. So he's learning. Tonight, Broom on the drive. Count the basket for number four in white. Tonight, Broom is one of the few big men you see the jab step right there, but what makes him so dangerous, he catches that top of the key area. First of all, he's improved his range. He can make that shot, but he's looking. He's looking for the cutters. There's going to be a guy cutting to the corner, to the wing. He can make that pass, but you also see how he can put his head down and make a bucket, too. Ole Miss fortunate. That ball after the miss bounced around a little bit. Just four points today for Janai Broom. He had 13 in the first meeting. Coming off his ninth double-double of the season. Step back, three. Raymond Breakfield with the triple. And we are tied at 66. Chris Beard encouraging the Ole Miss fans. Williams to Broom inside. Broom just wraps around. He went right around Rashad Marshall. Six now for Broom. Well, given the time and space, he's just going to pick you apart from anywhere on the court. Marshall tried to do it on the other end of the floor. He lost the handle. Turns it over. By the way, that was a two, not a three on the last end for Breakfield. So, a three-point lead for Auburn. Eight minutes to play. Breakfield call for the foul. And that will take us to a timeout. 7.49 for up in Oxford. Auburn leads it by three. Money. So free throws the rest of the way for the Auburn Tigers, and they are a good free throw shooting team. 76% for the year. Williams calmly makes the first. He's got 15 points, and that matches Auburn's biggest lead up four. And we've done games where we've seen Jay Will 
and we saw it tonight. He'll catch it on the post, turn and score. You know, you got to respect that three-point shot. And, of course, moving without the basketball, he's good at anyone with it. Auburn has outscored Ole Miss by 13 in the second half. From down nine to up five. That math doesn't check out. They outscored Ole Miss by 14 in the second half. There it is. Brought it back. Lob inside. Cisse with the jam. New season high for Musa Cisse. He's got 12 points. You can see that developing. As soon as Janai Boone steps up, takes that guy coming off the screen, Cisse just explodes to the rim for the alley. Auburn has made six shots in a row. Jalen Williams trying to make it seven. He was looking for the foul, didn't get it. Ole Miss has made three in a row. Planning it on the drive, the reverse. He did not get a whistle, or did he? He did get a whistle. A foul on Auburn, Jalen Williams. My apologies, I couldn't hear it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was extremely loud. And I like that from Ole Miss. We talked about how good defensively Auburn is when they set second in the SEC. Number three in the country in two-point percentage defense. So you've got to try to get some early offense if you can. That was not on the shot. That was the sixth team foul on Auburn. Morell guarded by Broom. Step back three. Hand in his face. Left it short. Baker Mazzara grabs a loose ball. Yeah, that's about as tough of a shot as you're going to take. A three fading away with Janai Broom in your face. Donaldson gives it to Broom. Broom working against Cissé. Has to pass out of it. Jones from the corner. Got the three. Denver Jones. Big shot. He's up to 11 points. 6'10", 240. Janai Broom. Did you see the footwork? Did you see the accuracy on that pass on time on target? Flanagan. Fouled on the way up. Chaney Johnson whistled. Right here, the patience, right? He's got spacing. Everybody spreads out for Auburn. You've got three guys at the three-point line. Another guy in the block right there. And Janai Broom, and you don't see this by big fellows like that. He created that open passing lane. Credit Denver Jones of staying exactly. Hey, Janai knows I'm going to be here. I'm not going to move. We've gone over this in practice. He can depend on me being right at this spot. Ole Miss, 8 of 10 from the free throw line today. I love Alan Flanagan's aggressiveness during these last few minutes. Flanagan now has 17 against his former team. Both Flanagan and Morrell with 17 for Ole Miss. Jalen Williams currently on the bench for Auburn. Leads the Tigers with 16. That was deflected by Ole Miss. One of the great things about being here and playing at Ole Miss is we're right next to the bench. Right next to the Auburn bench. We can hear everything that's going on. Denver Jones is looking for Janai Broom. He's Murray off of a cut to that block. Murray was trying to sell, but he did not touch that. <laughs> Well, I mean, the officials were not buying. They were, but you know, there's a little thing called video replay if they ever get stuck, not sure who it went off of. Lob into Broom. He's bodied up against Brandon Murray. Goes right at him with the left hand, and he got the roll. Yeah. Coach Pearl likes to have that out of bounds under the basket lob it right there in the middle with Cissé around it's difficult can't always do that if he's defending the basketball to get it up over the top we're able to do it there with Janai Broom. Auburn scored 35 in the first half they've already got 40 in this second half. Flanagan's pass batted away and that's touched last by Juju Murray it was on his head as he was standing out of bounds Seventh turnover by Ole Miss. Four of them in the second. Different options that could happen. The other thing, they don't turn over the basketball. So when in the games, you could depend that they're at least going to get a decent look at the basket. 
So I think that's important too. Teams who are loose with the basketball, you just don't know if you're even going to get a shot off. Ole Miss is going to do that because they value the basketball. One more number in terms of finishing. Auburn 17 and 1 with leading with five minutes to play in a game. Broom working against Cisse. Strong Janai Broom with the bucket. It was four powder blue jerseys swiping at the basketball. Broom keeps it high. You see how he kept it high? Looked around, didn't have anybody finish it himself. So Auburn up eight with five to play. Murray gives it to Flanagan. Brandon Murray has it knocked out of his hands by Baker Mazzara. Baker Mazzara has been working overtime and defensively this second half. He's got eight points and eight rebounds. I guess he wouldn't be working overtime unless it was actually overtime. He's, certainly, he's been good. He's been good. He's, he, he's giving Morell everything he's wanted. Shot clock at five. Morell, hard drive. Broom defended it well. Ole Miss comes up empty. Down eight with four and a half to play. Janai Broom lets it fly from deep. Janai Broom with the three. Auburn by 11. Morell bumped on the drive by Baker Mazar. So free throws coming up for Matthew Morell. We've seen Janai Broom do just about everything from the three-point line you give him any kind of space we talked about how much he's improved from last year to this year at the three-point line you send people to him double team got guys flying at him he's going to find the open man for a three-pointer did that a few possessions go to Demma Jones and he catches he can finish himself that was his 14th made three of the season we asked for his pearl about kind of feedback from scouts on Janai Broom and he said you know, it's not just making threes. He, he's proven that he can do that. He said one of the next steps in his evolution of a player has been being able to switch and guard smaller players, and we've seen that happen a few times tonight. And he said an excellent job. Coach Burrow said, you know, we don't lose much with him and Cardwell defending the perimeter than, than our guards do. That's how well they move and how smart they are defending. Ole Miss with an offensive rebound. Flanagan. Cut off in the lane. Shot clock at five. Flanagan gathers. Has it blocked by Broom. Auburn in transition. Donaldson off the glass. And walk. Count the basket. Excuse me, no foul there. 12-point lead for Auburn. Jalen Murray couldn't get it to go. Auburn starting to sense it. Three and a half to play. Up double digits. And after making this a track meet by both teams, Coach Pearl says, slow it down. Slow it down. Clocks our friend at this time of the game. Auburn has outscored Ole Miss 47-26 in this second half. Tonight, Broom trying to do it again. This time too strong. Brandon Murray with the rebound. Rakefield thought about it. He's got some room. Guarded by Broom. Flanagan with the left hand. And Chris Beard takes a timeout. We'll take it as well. Auburn trying to get a win on the road in the SEC. Up to be tested over and over. Ole Miss, by the way, got to go on the road in their next two games. Got to go to South Carolina, and then they go to Rupp Arena. Well, that Ole Miss-South Carolina game, what's so special about that is you know, first year head coach Chris Beard here at Ole Miss. I mean, you knew he was going to work some magic, right? You just weren't sure about South Carolina pick. At the bottom of the league, what they're able to do this year is Lamont impressive. Paris has done an incredible job in his second year in Columbia. Auburn content to work it deep into the shot clock. They feed it into Broom. He bobbles it, gets the handle, and Ole Miss comes away. So the Rebels get a stop. They're going to have to have those. They're going to have to have shots as well. Flanagan lost the handle. Feet went out from under him. Slipped on the floor. So an empty possession for Ole Miss, down 10 with 2.15 to play. Yeah, after that big-time defensive stop, I know 
Alan Flanagan's been the aggressor this second half, which has worked out uh, times for Ole Miss. That time, obviously, just got a little out of control. Auburn plus 19 in the second half. They were down nine at the break. They lead it by 10. Baker Mazzara on the drive with the left-handed flush. <laughs> Officials are going to take a look. Point one was on the clock. And in terms of what you're watching, you're looking clock first and then red light. <laughs> Any hesitation that was not going to count, but again, just a combination of the catch and the attack and finish. Morrell going to try a three. He's short. Murray with the rebound. Breakfield on the drive, and he gets the roll. Full court pressure for the Rebels. And a timeout taken by Bruce Pearl. Tonight, Bruce stops for a quick word with Morgan Freeman. Morgan. <laughs> so you talk about the development of players, and you can encourage, and you can provide opportunity, but unless you want to put in the work like Janai Broom has, it's just not going to happen. And... and Janai Broom, by the way, was named one of five finalists for the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Award for the best center in the country earlier this week. There's a bump by Murray. Mazzara, Baker Mazzara draws the foul. Ole Miss got what they wanted. An errant pass, good pressure. Auburn got a little lucky. Five different Auburn players in double figures. Caleb Williams with 16, Janai Broom with 15, 11 for Denver Jones, and 10 for both Chad Baker Mazzara and Trey Donaldson. Baker Mazzara at the line. Baker Mazzara is a just, he fits in perfectly, right? He's energetic, defends multiple positions, he can make shots for you, runs. About as quick and up and down the floor as anybody in the SEC. But that's that's Auburn, right? The waves that they come at you. Breakfield on the drive, left it short. Broom grabs the rebound. 15 points and now eight rebounds for Janai Broom. Talking about Baker Mazar just a second ago. He's one of those guys that's seen a lot of the country. Started out at Duquesne, transferred to San Diego State, then Northwest Florida State Junior College, and finally at Auburn. Broom in the post, guarded by Morrell. Here's Baker Mazzara for three. Got the three! And that, if there was any remaining question, is the dagger for the Auburn Tigers. Up 15 inside a minute. Broom with a foul. 54 second half points for Auburn. What makes them so difficult, we touch on a little bit, it's the, the wave of players that Coach Pearl can bring in. And they're not, there's 10 guys playing 15 plus minutes. We've talked about that. However, all guys, they bring you something different. They're all effective, but they do it in different ways. So if you're trying to defend them, right? Whatever position you're playing, you get a different guy coming in that's attacking from a different angle, that's got different skill set, but still effective. And Ole Miss, they haven't even scratched the sail. I, 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 this sailing still is through. I mean, it's high, extremely high, okay, because you're adding players in. Brandon Murray's getting a little more comfortable. Coach Beard's only been with these guys for, you know, not even a year. So imagine where they're going to be another six weeks. Musa Cisse, his best game of the season with 12 points today for Ole Miss. If I said the ceiling is through the roof, well, that, that wouldn't make any sense. You could say the ceiling is the roof. <laughs> I would say their potential is through the roof. Haven't hit their ceiling. 54 second half points. The most that Auburn has scored in a game this year. Katie Johnson with the exclamation point and the technical foul. Kind of saw that one coming. 
Katie Johnson is the sixth Auburn player. It's the air, even with Big Cisse, great shot blocker. You, know, you, you just got, like we talked about, Auburn's very athletic. You get 6'10", 6'11", they can battle with most of the bigs. I know Coach Beard isn't happy. And, and outside of it, I mean, Katie Johnson, it's... You know, it's not exactly the safest play to make, getting up there on the rim. Twenty-point game for Alan Flanagan, sixth time he's done that this season. Ole Miss basketball. Flanagan trying to add to his total. Broom with the rebound, and that is going to do it. The Auburn Tigers are going to go to 18 and four overall, seven and two in the SEC, and they hand Ole Miss their first home loss. Auburn walked into a hornet's nest. They took a haymaker in the first half and it dominated the final 20 minutes. I think we, we all knew Auburn was this good because Ole Miss is also an NCAA tournament team right now. Fantastic job. Both teams just